Welcome to Pixel Composer 1.18.3 So, like I said in the previous version, this one might take a little bit longer to come out due to the big hardware system that I'm working on. However, I haven't finished that one yet. Uh, this really is kind of like a tie set part one in a way because there's a lot more I have to do. And I think that it's been a while now since the last beta. So I'm just gonna wrap it up into this version first and then I'm gonna continue working on the Tyson system, especially the exporting and the gap engine integration in the next version. Maybe 0.4 or 0.5, we will see about it. So let's begin with the first feature, the Tyson system. So you right click, going to the input output, you're gonna see the entirely new section regarding the, the Tyson system. Also, uh, just a little bit quick update on the UI there. You can now collapse the section in the add node. You can also double click to collapse all and open all. The same thing here as well. You can collapse all and open all with double click. Anyway, now you have the new Tyset section with all the Tyset related node. As I have said, the export part here is not complete yet. So we're just gonna skip that for now. There's two nodes that we will be hoping today. This is a Tyset and a Tie Drawer. Uh, more info on the other node will be talk about Cobalt in its specific video on Tyset once this system is completed. So the Tyset node it takes surface or it takes texture and it export out the Tyset. So let's just drag a texture in. This one is, what is this? A uh, Solaria Rural Village Pack. You connect it to Tyset. Now you create a Tyset. You can see there's multiple things here. Now you want to draw it on a map. So let's create another node that's called Tie Drawer. And it take in the tie set, so you have to create tie sets first. Connect to it. Now we can just start drawing. Right, you select a tie, and then you start drawing. That's a uh, basic stuff. Now there's like extra feature, like you can create like an auto terrain system. So you can just drag over the area that is a valid auto terrain system, and then click add. And now you can add a new auto terrain. Right, and you can select multiple auto tie, and then you can create your own map. That's the first thing. You can open it and there are multiple formats that is supported. Then we have the rule section, which allow you to create algorithmic based rules to add like complexity and detail to your design without having to go and edit it manually. Like for this example, I'm just gonna say, we have this uh, grass color. You might just want to replace some of them with the one with the uh, grass. Simple enough. Maybe reduce the probability, right? You can also random the randomize the seed and it will just add in more detail for you. Now the rule section here is non-destructive. It's applied on top of your drawing. So you can continue editing your map. Right, and the rule will keep applying to your image. Right? There's a lot more you can do with rule system and I will cover it in, in, in different video. But that's uh, the basic gist of it. The output of this tie drawer is uh, the render map or the tie map which is another surface that have like the tie detail that you can use for exporting. And that's a basic overview of this tie set system. Next, we have the 3D subdivide node. So this one will subdivide the mesh into a smaller mesh, simply enough. Like for example, we have 3D plane here and you want to apply the displacement, right? So you connect it to the displacement and some noise. However, because the entire mesh is just one, not one, it's two triangles. So when you try to apply the height, it doesn't add the detail. If you want to add more detail, you have to subdivide this mesh. So we can just add the subdivide node in the middle and then increase the subdivision level. And now you will see that your mesh now have more uh, polygon to work with. And be careful with 3D stuff in Pixel Composer in general because Pixel Composer is not 3D software, right? <laughs> and this kind of like 3D stuff is really unoptimized. So use it as your discretion. The worst part is that the, the mesh is not even like a square mesh. If you look at the result here, you're gonna see that it's triangle. So every mesh is just is pre-triangulated by default. So it means that you cannot do a lot of modification here. It doesn't even connect to each other. If you try to use like a displacement in like cube, for example, you're gonna see that the mesh starts to break apart. As you can see here, you can see that the edge here, it doesn't connect because each of the triangles are independent from each other. So yeah, it wasn't made for 3D stuff, right? I just added it because, because it's fun, I guess. <laughs> because I can. And look at the time, look at the performance level here. This is this is not what Crystal Composer is, but it can do it. I just know that it can do it and I add it, but don't, don't use it too much. And this is subdivision level of 4, by the way. Then we have the sky generator node. Uh, this is a node that generates sky texture based on different sky model. So you can control like different uh, turbidity, you can control sun position. 
Then we have the shrink palette node. This is a node that reduces the number of color in a palette. When you use the palette extract and you set it to, for example, all color, you're gonna get a bunch of color in your palette. You can connect it to the shrink palette to reduce the number of color. And you can set how many color you want and the algorithm it used to shrink that palette. Then we have the Asprey tag node or ASE tag. So similar to the layer, this will allow you to extract a tag from your Asprey file. As you can see here, Asprey content also got uh, a new icon as well. <laughs> you have some cute Asprey icon here. You connect it to the tag. Now in this node, this project we have a simple tag called YMG. So we can just say Y and it will just extract the surface in that tag. You can have multiple nodes to extract different tag from your image or you can provide an array of string to be used as a tag as well because this node is an array processor. Then we have new interpolation method. Instead of a rest sign, I replace it with the length cross 3. Guess that's how it's pronounced. Uh, which can give you different results. And we have the ability to extract the metadata from the node in the node setting. You can see here it has output metadata. If you turn it on, you will see two new output, which is the name and the position. So you can output the name of the node itself as a value if you want to use it in other area. If I change the name, then the value here will change too. And the position also output the position of the node. Uh, I don't know why you want this, but I mean, you, you can use it. Next, we have an update to the L system, which is an option to output as a 3D object. So you can now use L system in a 3D. There's some new rules that allow for rotation in different secondary angles. Uh, and you can use it to generate like a 3D tree or 3D apart. The split text got a new mode that allows you to separate the text based on the number. So instead of using the delimiter, you can set it to periodic and you can set the period that you want or like how long each of the substring would be. But if it, you set it to three, it's gonna create an array of a three letter string. The canvas also got some small update that if you enable tiling, whether horizontal, vertical, or both, it will now also show the brush as well. And you can draw like a cross tiling to create a tileable texture. There is now also an anti-aliasing option for the draw line, the random shape, and the polygonal draw node. It used super sampling anti-aliasing, so it just draw an image in a larger surface and scale it down. So it, it might be a little bit different from the draw shape which use uh, SDF anti-aliasing, but it will make the shape look more smooth. We also have more options to the grid node as well. From the cascade shifting, we have the random scale or random shift allow you to create a more well, random patterns. There's a general performance improvement to different nodes as usual and a series of bug fix as I will show on the screen right now. And coming back to the main topic of this update, which is the tie set system, as I said, there will be more updates in the next 0.4.5 to the tie set system, especially with the game engine integration. So after I create all the tie system, I just realized that to make this node actually useful, to make this feature actually practical in a real environment, and I have to make the entire Visual Composer integrate closer to the game engine itself. So I might show you some screenshot of some prototype of a new game maker or game engine link that I'm working will be in the next version which means that you can now you should be able to interact more deeply with the game project that you are working I think that's gonna be the only way that I can make the Tyset system more useful right because uh, right now if you try to use the Tyset export you're gonna see that first the export format is really limited and when you try to export it as like a game maker room file I found that it's really destructive right you're gonna use that rule file in your project and then you're gonna add more stuff into it but now you cannot edit it in pizza composer anymore you only have to edit it in a game maker so my idea is the pizza composer should integrate directly directly to to the game maker room itself and control like a limited number of, of layers that would be a better way to make it more practical and uh, less destructive right and while i'm working on that integration i just found that feature to be like the big scope creep so before i gonna spend a month working on those stuff i just decided to wrap all the time set system time map system first in this 1.18.3 and i'm gonna continue working on the time map i'm gonna continue working on the game engine uh, integration in the later version right the, the plan is to have game engine integration with game maker Godot and maybe Unity. Not sure about how Unity deal with the tie set system yet. I have checked out Game Maker and Godot and this engine is like possible one. So that's gonna be the plan in the future. Please looking forward to that and come and try the tie set system. Uh, if you have any suggestion or bug report, you can check out the Discord channel. Link will be in the description. And for now, thank you for watching. 
and see you in the next one.